Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Welcome to the channel. This is UA Light with your Celestial Insight on how the upcoming Jupiter and Taurus transit will be affecting the world and opening divine doors of destiny, opportunity, and spiritual growth for the next year, according to your zodiac sign. In terms of its transit, which begins May 16th, 2023 through May 25th. So stay tuned for a brief overview of the transit's potential impact on the world and click the timestamp chapter for your rising, your sun and your moon sign, and specifically the house in which this Jupiter and Taurus transit will be traveling through in your natal chart to hear the astrology and psychic oracle predictions for how to personally navigate any lessons and opportunities of the Jupiter and Taurus transit. I'll be pulling five soul lesson cards, five divine door of destiny cards, and five oracle cards revealing the specific contexts and circumstances that may be a focus to give you a full picture. It'll be helpful to come back to these messages, the previous Jupiter and Aries message, and especially the Saturn and Pisces and Pluto and Aquarius transit videos linked below as things transpire for you. Okay, so go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, and let's get into it. So Jupiter is the planet of luck, expansion, optimism, and wisdom. And this is actually courtesy of its actual sort of scientific attributes. It is the grandest planet in the solar system, more than twice as large as all the other planets combined. And it has the most moons of any planet with 95 moons and is atmospherically made of gases and windstorms. And so esoterically, Jupiter has come to symbolize the planet that magnifies, expands, and widely transports whatever it touches, and is connected to higher wisdom traditions and philosophies, education institutions, world travel, and international commerce and manufacturing and importing and exporting. So overall, Jupiter is about how humanity is interconnected and can be in high conscious, humane connection through our expanded awareness from engaging various wisdom teachings, higher knowledge and education, travel and engaging with diverse cultures, and through our transnational infrastructure. For example, Jupiter is about the grand big picture and rewarding and expansively infusing our world with the characteristics and scenarios associated with whatever sign it is in. So in terms of a quick journey of Jupiter and the signs, while in Pisces, this manifested in everyone globally, turning to explore spirituality and higher wisdom traditions and traveling within their inner consciousness, right? While in airborne disease spread globally and shut down and forced our institutions, world travel, uh, important exporting and international commerce and manufacturing to transform. While in Pisces, you know, Jupiter spread illness and magnified issues of global human connection, healthcare, and compassion. In terms of Jupiter's transit through Aries, Aries also represents higher knowing and access to spiritual knowledge, similar to Jupiter, right? It also represents high intuition and instinct. Aries is also related to humanitarian and pioneering spirit and leadership, problem solving, honesty and self-awareness, and confident positive self-belief. And so Jupiter and Aries there has been a sort of synergy, right, for mass awakening and crown chakra activation and this sort of collective turn toward self-awareness, personal courage, the great resignation and entrepreneurship where people are working for themselves and being independent. Aries is also the god of war. And so Jupiter and Aries has also highlighted, you know, 
um, these transformative humanitarian events related to people standing up for oneself, revolutions for the oppressed and for causes, and also a lot of issues surrounding abuse within higher education, also issues of war amongst the countries, right, and within countries, protests, national security in the great power countries, and the military-industrial complex and governmental um, sort of spotlights on issues of gun control. And so I want to say that um, in Vedic astrology, Jupiter is transiting Aries, while in Western tropical astrology, Jupiter is considered to be transiting Taurus. And so um, the readings on this channel are from an integral Vedic and Western tropical astrology perspective. So the Jupiter and Aries video here on the channel will still be relevant for the world and uh, your personal lives. So definitely take a look. But in terms of this journey of Jupiter in the signs, how will Jupiter's transit of Taurus express itself? So in terms of the meaning of Taurus, right, Taurus is ruled by Venus, associated with the divine feminine, and Taurus rules the throat. And it is associated with divine creation, materially manifested and expressed, right? So the earth and its raw materials are personal attributes and personal assets. So the body, beauty, and creative art, and also systems of organization and valuation of these things, like the economy, cultural standards and ideals of art, beauty, the body, and love. In addition to how we make use of and maximize our material wars from our assets to experience comfort. So Taurus transits then put a spotlight on money, on beauty, home goods and luxury industries, on music and the music industry, the body and all sort of sensual and artistic expression and ideals. Represented by the bull, it is also about grounded actions to build on and solidify and materialize ideas and beliefs. And so it is associated with education systems and concentrated work effort. And in terms of Venus and the bull, it is about how we nourish ourselves with agriculture and food. And it also sheds a spotlight on love relationships and how all of these things affect your personal, material, and financial stability, security, and relationship with yourself in terms of self-love and self-worth and your ability to care for yourself. And so to understand more about the themes and lessons of Taurus's polarity with Scorpio, um, and how the eclipses in, the, in these signs this year will also be affecting these themes in areas of society and your personal lives, definitely take a look at the recent Eclipse Season Guide to understand a bit more. It is totally, totally, totally relevant, okay? And um, we actually have, you know, in addition to the eclipses that are going to be happening in these signs, we even have an additional sort of uh, Taurus uh, new moon that is happening that is not an eclipse. So, so, so much activity in the sign of Taurus that will complement and um, be very similar to some of the messages that come through here. But the Jupiter and Taurus transit will essentially mean a spotlight on laws, ideals, standards, and luck in the areas of love, money, and markets like travel and hospitality, luxury, home, beauty, and fashion industries, food, art, and entertainment, and love. We may see more expansion, innovation, and market growth, or even drastic changes or crises in these areas, especially because the the North Node and Uranus are in Taurus, which is already about predictability and surprising changes. And because we also have the final eclipses firing in Taurus in its opposite sign, Scorpio. 
So for example, um, today, uh, the day that I'm filming, filming this, this is March 3rd. Um, it was announced that Bath and Body Works has filed bankruptcy, right? And, um, We'll get into more world predictions and examples in just a minute, but just know that because there is already so many, so much activity um, going on in the cosmos between the Taurus and Scorpio signs, um, things are already happening, right? And because um, Taurus naturally is in a square to the sign of Aquarius and we have Pluto newly entering into Aquarius and Pluto is also about death, rebirth and transformation and big losses and gains, right? And so again, I'll get into more world predictions and examples in just a minute, but Jupiter and Taurus trines Virgo and Capricorn, right? And so it will also be a transit that supports, you know, practical committed efforts to achieving success and to innovating and reaching goals in these areas and industries and being materially rewarded for work well done in general. It's a lucky time to launch, reimagine, and promote ventures in these markets that I mentioned. And the earth signs and the fixed signs, Leo and Aquarius, will have much luck and opportunity during this transit. And anyone with major Taurus aspects. So for instance, if you have Venus in Taurus or something like that. Taurus is actually a pretty self-focused sign, and at its highest, it is about self-love and healthy self-care and healthy interdependency. And given that Taurus trines Virgo, it will also be a transit that encourages more people to focus on personal self-improvement and any beauty, nutrition, and health goals. There will be a spotlight on the sort of extreme effects of body image standards, diet culture, biohacking, and indulgence, as well as addictions and self-discipline, because Jupiter in Taurus is a sort of forewarning on the extremes of starvation and indulgence, while Saturn in Pisces is about emotional mastery and limiting vices. Okay, so this transit will spotlight extremes of indulgence, but also extremes of mass production of uh, products and things in these particular markets as well, particularly how these will affect climate, agriculture, and uh, supply and demand issues in the economy. So yes, with Taurus is trying to Capricorn and Virgo, Jupiter and Taurus will absolutely be about laws regulating these industries and products and their relationships to banking, markets, and health. All right. So uh, spotlight on global government affairs, laws and regulations in areas of travel and immigration and gentrification right? Hospitality, architecture, and real estate industries, luxury industries, and beauty, fashion, and hospitality, right? Agriculture and food industries, including weight loss medications and products, okay? There will definitely be surprises, innovations, major growth, and crackdowns in these markets as they continue to converge also. And like I mentioned, the spotlight on the manuf- on the manufacturing mass production, promotion, and global transport of food and products in these areas in terms of how supply and demand or their effectiveness relate to climate, agriculture, and messages of health and health culture, right? And so, for example, we're seeing media attention on the mass production of weight loss and diabetic medications like Ozempic and critiques of how they are being used for beauty and vanity reasons in celebrity culture and how that is essentially contributing to a supply shortage for actual diabetic patients and um, that also sort of contributing to the mass a sort of uptick in the mass production of similar kinds of diabetes drugs for vanity reasons like weight loss and anti-aging. 
Okay, so um, a new story was also just released uh, today on how this is also now happening with a kidney medication. Um, so a drug usually to help kidney transplant patients recover um, now being studied by researchers for their use for anti-aging. So this is all biohacker health culture and how biohacker health culture meets and converges with beauty and vanity, okay? And um, supply and demand issues, right? This is Jupiter and Taurus in action, all right? So another example of Jupiter meets Taurus is the sort of historical birth of iconic food chains like McDonald's. And um, so change and in innovation within food culture and of food delivery businesses and food entertainment TV might be a focus, right? For example, due to the pandemic and Jupiter and Pisces, right? Restaurants have had to adapt and uh, food culture has absolutely changed. And these sort of operational logistics and market valuations of these particular um businesses have skyrocketed food delivery businesses and so we may see more expansion innovation and market growth or even drastic changes or crashes in these areas if for instance they are affected by labor and food shortages so related to food, I'm also psychically getting the message that there could be issues related to dairy products and maybe an uptick in food product recalls. And so perhaps staying aware of um, food product recalls um, being something that everyone should heed. And also um, as these sort of spotlights on health and issues of how health products, food culture intersect with the ways that uh, it's important to think about climate and agricultural change and how they are all connected. Um, it could also be important to really take seriously how soil <laughs> at the end of the day really affects the efficacy of um our raw material resources and food and how they can truly contribute to our health, right? It's one thing to uh, say, oh, no more eating meat and, and just being vegetarian. And like that is the end all be all of how to maintain health. But at the end of the day, um, agriculture, chemicals, the sort of um, health of soil, all of that still affects the ways that um, vegetables and any other kinds of natural food or organic products um, affect your health and your body, right? And so, again, there's just going to be a need to think um truly about the future in nuanced ways, <laughs> you know, thinking about the fact that the North Node is there and uh, Jupiter and Taurus will conjunct the North Node, um, indicating the ways that we need to move, right? Um, think about the future in the long term. So definitely uh, taking seriously the need to look at how to save soil. And shout out to Sadhguru, who is the yogi mystic who has been raising awareness about this issue, right? And so generally, Jupiter's movement into Taurus is happening during Taurus season, right? Three days before a Taurus new moon. So Jupiter moves into Taurus on the 16th. And then we have a Taurus new moon on the 19th, right? And so the sun, Mercury, um, its ruling planet Venus have essentially all passed through um, Taurus, they've connected with the North Node and Uranus, um, all except for Mercury, and essentially illuminating and foreshadowing, right, these themed scenarios that will continue to escalate in the world and your life with the Jupiter transit through Taurus, right? And also because these have all made squares to Pluto, right, while Pluto has been in the critical zero degree of Aquarius, right? also revealing and foreshadowing the sort of personal and world implications of this aspect.
particularly how it will affect um, war and political power, how it will affect cultural power, right? Especially in terms of the ways that I just mentioned, but also, um, you know, the state of the economy and um, particular global industries and sectors of the economy, right? And so I'm going to get into a bit more of the particular ways that this transit will affect these areas. So in general, the Jupiter and Taurus transit always has a sort of intimate relationship with war and political power. And this is because the transit essentially follows Jupiter and Aries, which historically and even now has always been associated with times of war and radical and liberal sort of progression against conservative ideals. Um, and the backlash, right, which often sort of crashed the economy, right? Um, and for us this time around, um, it's also about how this is the sort of aftermath of uh, the pandemic as well from Jupiter and Pisces, right? Also sort of crashing the economy, transforming the economy in, in, in different ways, right? And so Jupiter and Taurus transits have always historically been about how markets rebound, recover, and expand, as well as these sort of political backlashes and clashes um, amongst, you know, different groups, and um, particularly conservative political backlash and how uh, leaders vie for power, right? Um, Taurus is the sort of primordial and fixed earth sign, right? It's ruled by Venus and it rules the throat. And it means that since it comes after Aries and is naturally in a square to the fixed air sign Aquarius, which is all about ideologies, you know, the sort of subconscious impulse of Taurus is seeking to embody and materialize divinity and conserve God power, knowledge, artistry, authority, and influence that Aries sort of intrinsically inspire, possess, and embody, right? And to structure it in our shared material world. The impulse of Taurus is to seek authority and accumulation of worldly resources and knowledge and to establish how resources and power are dispersed, delegated, and organized and systematized, right? And often through their powers of speaking, teaching, creating, persuading, and relating, right? And this is courtesy of their trine with Virgo and Capricorn, right? The shadow side of this is theft, possessiveness, um, selfishness, low morale, and also waging ideological wars with huge market effects and distasteful uses of political and cultural power. Think God complexes, dictators, and divas, okay? <laughs> and uh, previous transits sort of notoriously reflect you know, the rise in individuals vying for and rising to political power, particularly dictators, uh, authoritarians, right, who have this sort of timeless influence in history. And a sort of textbook example of this is Hitler, right, who was a Taurus and who quite literally was a young soldier who wished he was a god and who rose to power during a time when Jupiter transited Taurus while Uranus was also in Taurus like this time, right? Um, and he is notorious for influencing, right, some of the greatest crimes in history of humanity. And um, that included an obsession and also theft of some of the most iconic historical works of Egyptian and African art, <laughs> um, leading and encouraging mass genocide of people based on religious ideas and also aesthetic 
based racial philosophies, right, about looks. And, you know, where a lot of his uh, sort of organizational leadership (laughs) um, secretly involved Catholic popes, money rings, and more, okay? Um, And truly, investigations and revelations of the depths of all of the crimes are still ongoing today, right? And how multifaceted they were, right? And how truly... Um, he is a sort of textbook example of so many sort of like psychological issues in terms of not having a sort of integrated um, self-concept um, in terms of his relationship to femininity, masculinity, um, and uh, ego death, right? <laughs> so, and and uh, spirituality, right? Um, he wished he was a god, and part of that is because he essentially could not, uh, he didn't have a way to sort of integrate a lot of his sort of mystical experiences that he had, right? So he created a god complex amongst other things, right? Envy, and then crimes of humanity against the people that he secretly wanted to be like, right? He was obsessed with the G- Egyptians and Africans and their beauty while at the same time leading mass genocides of people based on their looks, right? <laughs> so it's, it's a really interesting thing, but <laughs> I'm not going to get too much on a tangent. But So we are, of course, sort of full circle with wars being waged and liberal, progressive, oppressed communities and ideologies experiencing sort of conservative backlash, right, due to Jupiter and Aries and Pluto Aquarius transits, right? And so Jupiter and Taurus will continue these sort of power grabs, culture clash around ideologies of body, sexuality, health, spirituality, climate, Uh, drag, uh, and class, right? And also battles around market growths and crashes, okay? And some examples of this, right? There continues to be a sort of um, attack on the sort of liberal arts um, sort of disciplines in higher education um, and also attacks on uh, job job security and also tenure for professors, right? The people who essentially teach (laughs) ideologies uh, about, you know, um, progression, thinking outside of the box, right? Um, So there are a lot of anti-tenure bills being drafted and um, essentially just the job and tenure security of people who work in these sort of um, liberal arts disciplines uh, being uh, insecure. And then um, Jupiter and Taurus in the Pluto and Aquarius square is also about issues of love, sexual taboos, and money related to foreign or global leaders, institutions, and communities. And Saturn and Pisces is also about spiritual leaders, religion and governance and, you know, all of this stuff and how it relates to women and children. And Jupiter and Taurus and Saturn and Pisces will essentially be um, in a harmonious relationship to each other. What this means in a nutshell is that these particular placements and their relationships to each other is a sort of recipe for more controversy surrounding spiritual leaders, sexual perversions, and their abuses of power regarding sex and money um, with children, with women, their congregations, their community members and followers also being exposed. Um, and this is already um, visible in the news and even on Netflix, right? Netflix has released some pretty interesting documentaries on <laughs> on particular leaders, right, who have done this, okay? And relevant to Jupiter and Taurus specifically, I also saw a news story yesterday, right? The divine was just sending me all of this news related to this, to this transit yesterday when I was like trying to finish this video up and it was just like, no, 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 here, here, this is, (laughs) this is, this is actually relevant. This is relevant. It's okay. Right. Um, 
but particularly relevant to Jupiter and Taurus and the sort of uh, themes of Taurus being related to food and power and authoritarian leaders. Uh, this story came out related to a cult leader in Kenya being investigated. They're trying to find them right now because of all of the reported mass deaths that have been happening under his leadership because he has been encouraging um, extreme starvation. I mean, so like a lot of people just starving themselves to death because of this leader, this cult leader, right? Essentially, um, you know, influencing them too, right? And so at its highest and most integrated expression, <laughs> Taurus is a sign that actually symbolizes a, a sort of generous interdependency, fair power and relational dynamics in education and spiritual organizations, right? Taurus is related to the Hierophant card, right, in the tarot, and this is why, okay? Um, you know, at its highest, it's also related to equitable economic and agricultural developments, the creation of timeless influential works of art, artists, you know, and leaders and thinkers in all industries and sectors. If you do, you know, a quick Google search, you just put in like famous Taurus people in history, um, you will see it, right? So with this Jupiter and Taurus transit, we can absolutely expect um, some sort of timeless and even iconic um, artists and influential works of art to take place, right? Um, people having high grossing tours, films, um, and experiencing a lot of success. Um, there again being major, uh, trends produced, right? Related to fashion and body image and beauty, right? All of these things that really affect culture. Um, and, Related to that, right? For instance, I saw something about Hollywood writers being on strike right now. Um, and, uh, I, I also think that in general, uh, and it's 11 11 on the clock as I'm saying this. Okay. Um, I think that Beyonce may end up having like one of the highest grossing tours in history or something. We will see, but she's starting this, uh, tour, uh, during the Jupiter and Taurus transit you know, and it's literally called Renaissance. So, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting. So these are essentially some examples, right, across time to illustrate how the Jupiter and Taurus transit tends to influence political power and cultural power. So let's take a quick dive into how the Jupiter and Taurus transit will potentially affect market power. So I mentioned that Jupiter and Taurus transits typically follow um, the Jupiter and Aries transit and events that are often related to market crashes, um, where the Jupiter and Taurus transits historically relate to how markets rebound, recover, and expand. Okay, and so one example of this is also how the how previous Jupiter and Taurus transits have been related to, for instance, recovery of the market after the Great Depression. Right. And so the government currently has continued to deny that we are in a Great Depression, even though there is incredible inflation and market instability. Right. So what do the planets in the cosmos tell us? Right. <laughs> in terms of some foretelling examples um, related to recent transits of the planets through Taurus, right? And it's squares with Aquarius. So because any planet's transit through Taurus forms a square with Aquarius, we have begun to see foretelling examples of scenarios that may be amplified or that may increase, right, with Jupiter's transit through Taurus uh, related to the market. And particularly with Pluto's entry into Aquarius, right? So I mentioned Taurus is a sign of the economy, banking, and markets. 
Pluto and Aquarius is about technology and the rights and the welfare of social groups. And so with Pluto's move into Aquarius and it forming a square with the North Node in Taurus, um, we have seen fintech, right, which is quite literally that sort of perfect example of, of, of technology meets the market, right? We've seen fintech, banking, um, investment, insurance, higher ed, job security, crises and changes, right? We've also seen um, these uh, debates related to the value decline of the U.S. dollar, right? And debates about the changing hierarchy of global currencies, right? Particularly um, China's currencies re replacing or having more value than the U.S. dollar, right? Um, and there essentially being all of these debates vies for power amongst the great countries about uh, what particular currency will replace the U.S. dollar as the world's sort of reserve currency. So these kinds of sort of controversies will absolutely continue with Jupiter's transit through Taurus. And um, additionally, and its sort of fundamental square with the sign of Aquarius will also perhaps continue um, protests from the people versus the government about continued growing wealth disparities, right? And taxation and the sort of uncertainty of job pensions and retirement security for the working class while elite populations uh, continue to um, expand their wealth, right? And one example of this has already taken place, right? So for instance, there were protests in France where people essentially protested outside of the LVMH headquarters and the offices of Bernard Alnault, right? Who is essentially the richest person in the world through um, all of the sort of companies under the LVMH conglomerate, right? And if you are unaware, uh, LVMH is essentially the holding company that is over uh, brands like Tiffany & Company, Christian Dior, Fendi, Louis Vuitton, uh, and more, right? And so because the French president, Emmanuel Macron, if I'm saying that right, uh, advanced legislation through his constitutional powers rather than a parliamentary vote to cut the pension budget and um, because they also plan to raise the country's retirement age from 62 to 64 the people protested right and they were like what the fuck right <laughs> they're like how can we have the literally the richest man in the world you know, um, here, right? In this country, running businesses here, and you're trying to say that we don't have a budget for the working class people to have pension security and, and all of these other kinds of things, right? So this was a protest that happened, right? And so we get to see this sort of intersection of this square between all of the things related to Pluto and Aquarius and uh, Taurus, right? So with Jupiter and Taurus, we can absolutely continue to expect maybe more of these sorts of issues related to taxation, uh, wealth disparities, and uh, class wars. Who knows? We will see. But um, the Jupiter and Taurus and Pluto and Aquarius square is also this sort of intersection of, you know, this sort of civilian crisis of trust in, you know, the security of government institutional resources, right? And how that trust might also be increasing due to the increasing privacy and cybersecurity crisis that is also happening, where everyone from regular civilians to governmental databases are vulnerable to attack right now. So, you know, with people seeing how governments handled the pandemic, seeing how government databases and the economy are super vulnerable, there is a general sort of mounting crisis of trust around livelihood and material and financial security and cybersecurity. And 
banking and fintech is essentially that sort of intersection of where um, Torian and banking and Aquarian technological advancement and innovation meet. And so crises in these areas in fintech and digital banking and just banking and the markets in general could be something to watch out for. And we've begun to see foretelling examples of these kinds of scenarios as soon as Pluto entered Aquarius, where um, it essentially has been in this square with the North Node, right? And so when that happened, the Silicon Valley bank crash happened. And with the Silicon Valley bit crash, that of course affected anyone who had, uh, you know, money there from really rich and multi-million dollar companies to other civilians, right? And so the Jupiter and Taurus square with Pluto and Aquarius will happen actually two days after Jupiter moves into Taurus and that will be on May 18th, and it will also be just right on the eve of the new moon in Taurus. And so we there could be something that happens, right, around this time where there could be perhaps some sort of major crisis related to banking, related to the market, um, related to fintech, related to currencies, something, or and it's most positive, <laughs> it's most positive um, potential, maybe some sort of innovation or um, resolve related to any sort of banking or market crises. We'll see. So I mentioned how political alliances and the ranking of international currencies um, being something that might be spotlighted. But also the changing rank of the international economies that are, and the geographies, right, that are considered the most promising, right, is also something that is changing. And there is a particular kind of cultural, political, and economic spotlight on India right now that I think will continue um, with this Jupiter and Taurus transit and particularly um, India now being recognized as um, or rather the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, making predictions on India as being the geography with the most promising economies. And this is absolutely related to India's relationship to, um, you know, spirituality, it being a sort of sacred geography, right? An exporter of culture, fashion, yoga, and historically really powerful spiritual teachers, right? And so um, with that, though, as uh, global luxury uh, travel economies and relations continue to experience, you know, these sort of varying sort of crises, booms, and re recoveries, and where people also continue to expand in their uh, appreciation and their sort of economic relationships with Indian economies, there's also going to be this tension of, you know, transcultural appreciation and respect versus cultural appropriation. And that's one thing I'm seeing in particular where a lot of fashion industries are spotlighting India and trying to rewrite their relationships to India and give it its proper respect in terms of uh, Indian uh, labor and um, fashion influence and all of these things haven't secretly been a sort of integral uh, sort of labor force and sort of space of influence for a lot of Western <laughs> culture and fashion and sort of spiritual development, right? And that is something that is sort of happening right now. There's a sort of resurgence. There's a sort of karmic recognition um, happening in terms of the spotlight on India and a sort of renaissance in these various industries. So while markets will try to recover through their expansion 
and their sort of global economic relationships with certain geographies. Political issues related to war and related to economies are also affecting mass like relocations and uh, global gentrifications. And an example of this is how in general, following the pandemic and the sort of forced restructuring of the economy to really center more remote work, people have also um, sort of opted for more entrepreneurship. And we have experienced what is called a global uh, resignation where people are taking this opportunity to quit their jobs that they already hated, really, <laughs> um, to become an entrepreneur and live a nomad lifestyle where they travel the world more, right? And that, again, more relocation, migration, and even gentrifications being a product of market instability. But in terms of politically, one example of this is also the fact that because of the uh, war with Russia and Ukraine, um, war refugee migrations are also a big thing that are affecting global migrations and uh, relocations and even gentrifications, where, for instance, um, there has been a great influx of a Russian diaspora in uh, Bali, Indonesia, and also um, even in India, and where the government, <laughs> the Indonesian government has also, you know, reported, you know, variously how they may or may not like it, right? <laughs> you know, so all of these things are changing. And additionally, you know, there will be a spotlight on the relationship between, you know, the travel economy and the global luxury economy's um, relationship to luxury real estate, land grabs, you know, and also contributing to things like, uh, you know, global migration, relocation, and even gentrifications even contributing to ecological damage, gentrification and displacement, all of these things being really complex issues at the intersection of, you know, transnational politics and economic development, innovation, but also um, disparities, right, and inequalities, which Pluto and Aquarius will continue to highlight. And the thing is, is that it's not always a bad thing. I think in general too, Jupiter rules, you know, higher wisdom and the ways that we are asked to sort of evolve, come to higher knowledge and wisdom through learning and interacting and engaging with different cultures and particularly with the ancient wisdoms of the cultures who have been wisdom keepers, right, of higher knowledge. And so all of this will, you know, just continue to play out variously and be really complex. <laughs> so, but again, the spotlight on, you know, transcultural appreciation, um, how everything will relate to respectful interdependency, trying to find balance, and also um, thinking about the climate. All of that is going to be front and center. Eco challenges will absolutely be a thing to uh, look out for. Taurus is related to the climate. It's related to Earth and related to climate change. And um, Jupiter and Taurus will absolutely be about all of the ways that the Earth is continuing to manifest, you know, natural disasters as a particular response to excessive cultural habits, right? Like over mining, like overproduction, all of these things in terms of taking advantage of natural resources in a way that isn't mindful, right? Or that gives back to the Earth, right? So, one other sort of example of the mindfulness around this is how, like, for instance, Jupiter and Taurus is all about sort of aspiring to wealth. It's all about aspiring to luxury lifestyles. And um, where 
if you pay attention, right, owning private planes and jets are kind of this sort of like cultural symbol of truly having reached like the pinnacle of wealth and what one should aspire to. But at the same time, private planes and jets actually contribute uh, the highest carbon footprint. (laughs) <laughs> and this is something that was exposed on Twitter, I think. Um, and so again, right, there will continue to be just all of these tensions, right, to kind of work through and um, things for us to consider in terms of like, what is our North Star, right? We have the North Node in tours. What is our North Star? How can we balance taking care of ourselves, taking care of the earth and living good lives, right? <laughs> So that has been my spiel on how to be a good global citizen. (laughs) No, but uh, all of the particular predictions and potential impacts of the Jupiter and Taurus transit on the world. Take a minute to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Let's get into particular key dates and aspects of the Jupiter and Taurus transit. Jupiter aspects are largely uh, positive, right? They offer us helpful information, positive results, and feelings of optimism, right? And an ability to get along better with those uh, in our surroundings, right? And so these are just a few of the key dates and transit aspects that could uh, be pertinent. It is not an exhaustive list. You will absolutely have to stay tuned to the channel for the monthly astrology forecasts. All right. So May 18th, Jupiter is freshly in Taurus and forms a square with Pluto in Aquarius and a square with Mars in Leo. And so this uh, transit in particular, the 18th through the 23rd is truly about ambition and competition, but also being able to troubleshoot things, right, that may um, sort of set you up for the long term, for success in some way in the long term. And then on June 1st, this is one of the major, major um, Jupiter and Taurus uh, transit aspects, right? Jupiter conjuncts the North Node of Destiny in Taurus. And this is one of the key sort of astrological events of 2023 in general, but particularly in terms of Jupiter and Taurus aspects. And the North Node has a sort of similar energy to Jupiter. It is absolutely also related to destiny, right? And some positivity, right? And sort of fairy dust on things. It's great for manifesting, especially because um, on around this time, the very next day after June 1st, um, Venus and Cancer makes a trine to Neptune in Pisces. And so focus visualizations of like your dreams, you know, setting positive intentions um, can be really powerful actually for manifesting things, manifesting results, attracting the right resources, people and circumstances in your life, right? And just really being able to um, change your life, right? Turn your life around, right? With um, Jupiter conjuncting the North Node of Destiny and Venus and Cancer trining Neptune in Pisces, this is really about your prayers and visualizations being heard by your spirit team, right? So also, you know, making, you know, any efforts towards the things that you would like to see manifest in your life, um, you could begin to get sort of feedback or, or sort of synchronistic events, right, related to what is possible for you, like what your potential really is, right? And it'd be a sort of preview of what the Jupiter and Uranus conjunction in 2024 might bring for you, okay? And then July 1st, we have the Cancer Sun and, and Mercury making a conjunction and then forming a sextile to Jupiter. Okay, so this is actually a really lucky day. You could receive good news. It is a good day to act, to promote, to connect, um, receive news and help in the interest of your long-term goals. Um, good day for travel um, or any sort of travel planning or international affairs business, right? Um, and even for connecting with foreigners, right? Finding people who are very helpful and who could play um, a positive sort of role in any goals or long-term plans that you are trying to make. Um, This could also be a good sort of um, 
aspect for launching anything related to food, maybe women's health. Um, and generally, it's just great for all business, travel, and legal affairs. And then on August 1st, Jupiter and Taurus makes a trine to Mars and Virgo and also um, squares the sun and the moon in the um, Aquarius full moon lunation. And so this is all about completing and seeing positive results with something that you've been learning or working on or even promoting related to your skill or trade. Um, this could be coming into knowledge of something that enables you to have an edge over competitors in any particular sort of uh, trade or industry that you may be in. This could be you completing some sort of education, educational program uh, related to a skill or a trade or uh, just any sort of educational program. This could be study abroad also, given that Jupiter is involved here. And also um, a time where you're traveling, you're traveling and may end up coming across, right, some knowledge of some sort that helps you, you know, have a sort of competitive edge or to sort of broaden your reach and potential with whatever it is that you do. And then in general, um, Jupiter and Taurus will make a number of trines with Mercury while it's in Virgo. Um, also, as you know, Mercury goes retrograde, right? And so this is why it's going to make a number like five trines with Mercury <laughs> because Mercury is going to go retrograde while in Virgo. This could absolutely be about, right, um, organization and communications, uh, travel back and forth, right, um, intellectual pursuits, business and legal things that are just ongoing, right? Things that, that may be ongoing, um, long-term planning even, right? And sort of dealing with changes and details. This transit could also indicate some sort of innovation or even new trend that comes on the scene related to health, wellness, and fitness. Um, and uh, in general, I think that Jupiter making this trine with Mercury and Virgo is also going to be about being sure that you are keeping your word and following through with any sort of goals um, and promises that you have been making to yourself and others, right? Making sure that you are following through with what you promised because Jupiter a lot of times can be about over promising or even being over optimistic, right? Before having all of the details and, um, you know, not having planned for changes, right? And so as Mercury is going retrograde um, and making these trines with Jupiter, it could absolutely be about troubleshooting things um, as more details become available to something that you are working on um, related to the long-term or any long-term plans that you are making. And then um, December 31st, uh, or rather uh, September 4th through December 31st, Jupiter goes retrograde. And so similarly, um, it's a great time to sort of like take a step back, review progress, um, be realistic about any plans and, um, you know, preparing for you know, the new year, essentially. And uh, between December 27th, um, the sun in Capricorn makes a trine with Jupiter while it is retrograde right before it goes direct on the 31st. And so this could absolutely be a time of finding resolve, feeling optimistic and empowered about the future and the new year um, for those on the West and um, sustainability of something, right? And for some of you, this is relocation to a new place in the world and finally feeling settled, right? And um, at home and also coming to see how much the year has taught you in general, right? How it's blessed you, how it's given you a lot of practical information and even practice in leadership skills um, and professional success in some ways. This could be, you know, positive fourth quarter results in businesses. This could be debt freedom, right? Um, support from wise people or people in authority positions, maybe even investors of some sort, right? And um, the other major, major um, Jupiter and Taurus aspect is the Jupiter 
conjunction with Uranus while it is in Taurus. And so this is a really powerful alignment that is going to activate like innovative breakthroughs, um, announcements, surprises um, when it comes to all of the industries that I mentioned before in the collective overview. So when it comes to food, fashion, um, finances and the market um, and art, you know, and uh, especially the music industry, things like that, right? Um, and so there could also be a time where we do have some pricing sort of changes or, or final sort of, um, I don't know, emergence of uh, decisions in terms of new currencies, right, on the world stage or, um, you know, new food fusions going mainstream, new trends, um, this could also be one of those sort of alignments that triggers natural disasters, right? So earthquakes, volcano eruptions, all of those kinds of things, right? So we will have to wait and see. And so let's check out your individual astral tarot insight and spiritual advice. Again, I'm going to be doing um, oracle predictions related to how to personally navigate the lessons and opportunities of Jupiter and Taurus. I'll be pulling five soul lesson cards, five divine door of destiny cards, and five oracle cards uh, revealing the specific context and circumstances that could be a focus to give you a full picture. Take a look at these um, according to your rising sign, especially because that will give you an idea of what particular house this transit will be traveling through and give you the sort of most sort of most accurate depiction of how this could resonate for you. But absolutely still look according to your sun and your moon sign as well. OK. Okay, Taurus. So Jupiter will be transiting your first house of identity, aesthetics, and personal power. And so this transit is all about um, your confidence, power, and influence just soaring to new heights, okay? And your earning potential. Um, the planet of luck and abundance, right, in your first house is such a big deal. It's about, you know, this being your moment to shine, uh, feel exuberant, right, and vital in your energy, and just experience a sort of positive and sweet side of life. You will feel sort of energized and optimistic when it comes to work and the potential of achieving new goals, right, that just really sort of level up your life. And so it's absolutely a time of, you know, not sitting back, you know, you feel ambitious and motivated to forge ahead. And, you know, it's about you creating your own reality through you being optimistic, fun loving, and also decisive, right? And independent right? And due to Uranus having already been in your sign, it's like you've already sort of been experimenting with your style, working on important projects um, and launches, right? And just really tapping into your self-expression and transforming your career through expanding your networks, right? Your market reach and connections with important uh, sort of uh, moguls in your industry, whatever industry you're in, right? So that your visionary goals are supported, right? And these could be things related to media, writing, publishing, teaching, higher learning, art, entertainment, wellness, growing your finances. You may be able to see some really big rewards and have some really successful launches um, in any of these things, right, with this transit. Jupiter and Aries was really all about you trusting your instincts and taking risks, you know, um, getting up the gumption, really. And so Jupiter and Taurus is just going to be about you um, continuing to build on all of that, all of the ways that you have been networking with people outside of your usual circles, um, with wise people who can give you um, advice and support 
um, and also expanding your mind, right? Through uh, education or your schools of thought or your relationships with people um, from different cultures or ways of life, right? And who just have a different way of seeing things, different points of view. All of this to help with your sort of professional development, uh, money management, financial literacy, um, even uh, with manufacturing and product and project development, right? In the interest of your career success. And so with this transit, it's really going to be about um, continuing to think of how to creatively utilize media marketing travel to help your goals, to uh, build your reputation as a serious professional, but also try new things and not take life too seriously, right? Um, it'll be about a good balance, maintaining and building momentum towards some big ultimate goal or vision that you can picture for yourself, right? Um, and, you know, the thing is, is that, um, you know, it'll be important for you to invest time and attention to your inner world, your internal world and personal spirituality as well to kind of aid your creativity and so that you rest and recenter, right? Um, and continue to clarify your vision in terms of um, what it is that you envision for yourself, um, but also not losing sight of your values and a higher purpose outside of money, right? While you continue to essentially demand your worth and not settle or dim your light, right? In achieving your goals. And coming from having so much activity in Aries, which is the 12th house uh, for you all, it's, as you can see from the cards here, it, it looks like, you know, a time of sort of resurrection in a sense, right? Returning to the world with new knowledge and projects to promote and new aesthetics and even new gifts and talents to reveal and wield in the world as Jupiter sort of makes the world your oyster, you know, for increasing your wealth, impact and influence. And, um, you know, we have the discipline card here and we have the loneliness card here in reverse and these doorways, again, just looking like a resurrection. But this loneliness card here in reverse and the discipline cards, both of them sort of look like the world cards in the tarot traditionally. Um, and so I'm definitely, again, seeing that as that balance, right, between maintaining discipline, um, but also making time for your internal world. Um, as you know, the world is essentially your oyster, right? With the soul lesson cards, we also have, right, you know, we have discipline, we have loneliness and surrender and friendship in reverse and also empathy. And um, I definitely see this as this being about this tension between, you know, being self-interested and self-focused on your self-promotion and how that could actually require you um, coming out of your shell after perhaps a period of hibernation, if you look at the doors, but also maybe feeling... Um, maybe feeling distrustful of others. This could also just be about um, how this transit is going to require you to just be busier, right? And take advantage of opportunities around you that, and that perhaps requiring distance and separation from certain relationships while you focus on other kinds of relationships that are aligned with your new goals, um, your new sense of identity and certain new principles, values, and beliefs you hold, right? After a period of transformation in your life, maybe mental, spiritual, and even physical and financial transformation in your life. For others of you, though, this is about not overdoing collaboration, right? And having immense mindfulness in your collaborations and relationships in general, Integr interrogating your own integrity, um, interrogating your own intentions and also the intentions of others, right? The empathy card here says, you know, seeing both sides. So I think this is also about, you know, um, also navigating, you know, transactional relationships versus those with emotional depth. And again, about the discernment and the discipline required in navigating all of those. For some of you, this is about the balance of not being complacent, but also not obsessively ambitious, right? In a way where it borders on desperation or, or leads to burnout, 
right? The discipline card here is about, you know, pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone, being very passionate and optimistic, um, especially if you are a Taurus where, you know, your natural sort of energy is to, is to go steady, to go slow, you know, take your time to accomplish things, you know, um, it's about that balance for some of you, right? Where if you are, you know, go getter, you know, don't burn yourself out. But if you are someone who can be a little bit reserved, right, to also not rest on your laurels, right? And this is why the discipline card is here. And um, if you look at, you know, the surrender and this row where the surrender card is and the magician in reverse, it's like, you know, the time you take to complete things sometimes is about your need to feel in control and sometimes feeling like you don't have everything you need or want, or you don't have all of the information. And, um, you know, with this transit, it's about, yes, take that into consideration, but also try to make an extra effort and push yourself, right? You know, Jupiter will conjunct the North Node of Destiny and Uranus in your sign. And it's kind of a sort of once in a lifetime energy an opportunity to really transform your life, to have faded opportunities, connections, and blessings. Uh, drastic changes in relationships in your career can occur. Also opportunities to travel, right, to sacred sites. I see that with the temple card. But truly, um, it is just about expanding your mind and making the world your oyster. So in order to really capitalize on this energy, you have to kind of put yourself out there, all right? And if you look at the Divine Door of Destiny cards, right, they absolutely um, sort of not only re-emphasize some of these sort of general collective messages that came through related to this transit, which, by the way, absolutely personally <laughs> apply to you. We have, um, you know, the 1111 card here, right? So again, it's about fate. It's about destiny. It's about luck and incredible, incredible um, opportunities to make quantum leaps, to launch things, to promote. And then we have the Nomad card. So definitely related to, like I said, travel and putting yourself out there um, and um, forming new relationships and um, a stranger's grace with discipline. This card says, Ego fears the sudden danger, but never underestimate the kindness of a loving stranger. So that absolutely um, just aligns with what I said about discernment, new relationships that could be beneficial for you, change beckons, and then it says heart healing. So this could absolutely be about um, what the effects are of perhaps ending certain relationships and beginning certain new ones. And then perhaps some people wanting to reconcile with you with this transit, right? Um, people being attracted to you generally, right? Because of the sort of luck and, and sort of light that kind of surrounds you and that kind of exudes, right? So discernment will be, um, key, um, with relationships, definitely. That was definitely one of the things that I was getting with you all. But it could absolutely be a time of making some incredible, incredible connections, right? All right. So definitely take advantage of this transit. I wish you all all the blessings and the luck and success. And uh, while you are making the most of all of these opportunities, just make sure that you um, don't burn yourself out or let any of these sort of changes in your life and lifestyle negatively affect your health. Okay. So like this video and subscribe to this channel. Take care. Hello, dear Aries. So Jupiter is blessing your second house of income, values, um, self-worth, and your material possessions. And really is just so positive in terms of like your potential to increase your income and earning potential, right? Um, expect powerful new beginnings when it comes to, you know, new ways of making money or increasing the money um, that you make from certain unconventional ventures, right? And, you know, it is just a time for 
you truly, truly, look, we have the courage card here. We have the acceptance card here and the self-esteem card in reverse. It's definitely about you reevaluating your values, right? Healing any possible issues when it comes to your self-worth, any wounds or issues related to lack and money, um, and just really leaving outdated beliefs behind that could hold you and your earning potential back, right? Definitely not in the sense of you, um, you know, going against your integrity, but just truly, truly surrendering in a sense to um, the things that you can't change and all of the ways that you can create opportunity and stability and wealth for you um, through all of your amazing talents, your beliefs, and your authenticity and originality, right? And it can open a lot of doors for you. You are likely to feel more confident and enthusiastic with this transit about your ability to um, achieve financial freedom and, and earn a living and attract more income. Money problems from the past may clear up during this transit, right? If you use it appropriately, you know, developing budgets, managing your resources. Um, this could be a time where you are um, getting rid of certain material possessions and um, buying new ones, right? Being the receipt of gifts and um, being able to make major purchases or sales, right? Bonuses. Um, if you work with anyone, it's definitely a good time to work with financial institutions to um, better your uh, sort of financial health. And it's also definitely a trend it transit that is about being mindful with any overspending as things are going good you feeling good and the world of opportunity is opening for you right it's definitely about being mindful making sure that your um, money investments line up with what your sort of ultimate long-term goals are right and so definitely keep an eye out for opportunities in your life um, Jupiter rules your ninth house naturally. And so you might have opportunities to increase your income through, through, uh, travel, through education, through picking up a new skill or trade, um, expanding your reach and your audience in your business could be something that goes really well for you and increases your finances, right? And, um, one of the things that I'm definitely seeing with the cards here is that Jupiter in Taurus is also going to activate some sort of romantic, some sort of romantic dealings for you. Okay. Um, with the regret card here and the, uh, appreciation card right after it. Um, if you look at just this row of cards, right? Um, and look at the doorway it's it's the grass and the greener doorway right it's something here about how the grass wasn't greener for someone who you uh who you used to be in a relationship with right there's someone who has regret um about not having you in their life anymore, right? Some regret in relationships, right? This is how some people feel about you in terms of perhaps seeing how the grass has been greener for you actually since you separated from them and are doing better than ever, right? You being the one who essentially got away. And when you look at the cards, the doorway cards, when I turn them over, we have the nomad card, we have the three of cups, right? Under this regret card. So it's definitely about people who you have been in relationships with in the past. These could be friends. These could be old lovers. It could even be family, right? Just people having regret, um, in terms of their relationship or lack of a relationship with you, right? And we have the appreciation, the heart chakra and the courage plus acceptance cards here, right? I feel like this is about someone trying to get up courage to apologize to you on behalf of their regret. This could be some of you, right? But um, I'm definitely seeing it as a need to cut the spiritual cord in a relationship um, for ultimate heart healing, right? And um, rebirth in some way, right? 
Um, yeah, this all tied up card here, I'm getting, you know, the ties that bind, right? That's what I'm getting with that. And about this need to cut the spiritual cord in certain relationships. Um, it's holding you back in some way. Maybe from being able to let in more love with this this uh, heart chakra card here. Um, and, you know, it's definitely related to just appreciating the lessons, right? You know, bless your past, let things go. And um, that cutting cords on all levels, right? Spiritual ways, but also the practical and material ways, like just opening up a sort of like spiritual portal for you to really receive, right? Receive, right? Um, being able to unlock wealth, resolve debt, and, um, you know, free yourself of ancestral curses of poverty. That's what I'm getting for some of you, right? And um, I'm also seeing this too is about just this deeper, this deeper healing for you all where, you know, the messages have been coming through about, you know, you know, the Jupiter and Taurus transit is about, you know, for you all anyway, I'm getting is about bringing more light into the body. It's about God embodiment. It's about your enlightenment. It's also about your spiritual renewal, right? Accepting how the hardships, you know, the past limitations and restrictions in your life, like seeing them as healthy limitations, right? How they were the greatest blessings that really led you to certain lifestyle changes, mystical experiences, spiritual enlightenment, being able to unlock gifts and certain knowledges and literacies that you just would have never accessed if you were still bound in certain relationships, right? Um, so I'm definitely seeing that for you all, right? Um, all of this is about putting you in contact with self-esteem and personal power that really comes from the divine and not external validation, right? I'm seeing this also as about some of you being a shapeshifter, right? Changes in your appearance. Um, and perhaps some of that being about you now having more money to make certain changes. Um, I'm also seeing, you know, there's a semblance between the message that I'm getting here um, and uh, the eclipse reading, particularly the Libra reading. Some of you may be dealing with Libras. Definitely take a look at the eclipse. <laughs> the eclipse readings as well in terms of relationships, all right? But I'm also seeing that for you all, um, you might be traveling to new places. You might be experiencing new cuisines and making changes in your diet, maybe based on you traveling and moving to new places. Um, maybe even having to um, just make sure that you are balancing your diet. If you come in, if you are just coming into money, right? And you're trying to indulge, right? Again, it's about balance. <laughs> and um, I also see that... Um, this draw down the moon card, it says singing soft songs. Some of you, um, it also says dance in sheer delight. And so I'm thinking about the fact that uh, Taurus is related to the arts and creativity. Many of you may be um, expanding or making use of some of your more creative, artistic, musical, dance uh, sort of gifts, right? And and this transit could bode very well for you with you doing anything with those particular kinds of talents. All right. So dear Aries, I hope that this has been really helpful for you. I wish you so much success and abundance. And uh, take a look at all of the other readings on this channel. They have been very, very um, positive, just like speaking so much light and love over you and your long journey, right? And um, so give this video a like and subscribe and check out the remaining videos on the channel. Take care. Hello there, Pisces. So Jupiter and Taurus is transiting your third house. And for those with Jupiter transiting the third house, this is all about communication, writing, graphic design, and advertising. This is about branding of businesses. This is about your daily routines, perhaps learning a trade. Um, it's related to education and teaching or speaking. Also travel, both um, your daily local travel, but also um, 
like long distance travel, right? This could indicate those kinds of things increasing for you and putting a spotlight on scheduling and organization, right? And um, this could be a time where it's like you are just being a new learner in some way um, or even having children that are starting schooling in some way um, because this is a uh, house that is often about early child, early childhood education um, and schoolmates, right? Um, as much as it is also about neighbors, siblings, and extended family, all right? And so um, your relationship to higher education or your child's educational experience, for some of you, you might have toddlers beginning schools, um, beginning school in general, or changing your daily routines. Um, and you considering maybe where you would like children to be educated, right? Um, and maybe the scheduling with that, if you are also someone who travels a lot, has a lot of work responsibilities. Um, and this could also be about your daily commutes and travel experiences with young children or with children in general. This could also be about what philosophies and values you um, instill in your children and you may be coming to terms with that maybe children asking you questions or you being at this space where you are thinking long term about what decisions you are going to make in the interest of your child's future and your future right and um this is also a really lucky transit for anything that has to do with trying new creative solutions or technology, um, such as apps, software, um, you improving your communication, both online and offline, you having more exposure, um, promotion, and um, it'd be a good time for you to start or expand any of your online businesses and just have positive results and growing your reach, customer or fan base. It's all about growing your knowledge and spreading your knowledge, right? Through media, publishing, teaching, touring, um, creative uh, technologies, right? And traveling the world and even about working remotely, right? And overall, just growing your impact and all of those kinds of things, it, contributing to changes in your daily life routines and maybe you having new neighbors or interacting with new people, right? Jupiter is just really favorable for also um, relocating, right? And um, launching projects also in beauty, fashion, entertainment, writing, teaching, or in general, um, you planning and working in your daily life towards these kinds of projects and them being released in the future. Okay. And I have to say, Pisces, that I'm getting some um, similar message in the cards that I pulled related to some of the cards and the messages that came out in your eclipse reading, given that we are going to have eclipses in Taurus and their sister sign, Scorpio. There's something here about security, privacy, buying new property, relocating to undisclosed locations, and in general, being more mindful about your uh, sort of daily routines, travel routes, and, and usual uh, places that you visit um, needing to be more uh, discreet or undisclosed, right? Um um, from the door to value and the divine guardian and the doubt card in reverse, I'm also getting a message about maybe some of you um, investing your money into a trust um, or maybe even receiving an inheritance related to family. Um, I'm also in general getting that... Um, there could be some child support or custody battles. I'm getting the ties that bind with this uh, all tied up card in reverse. There could be something about that being resolved. Um, there could also be something about uh, removing any and all blocks to your success and safety in general, right? Because we have Archangel Michael showing up here. Um, and yeah.
those were just some of the downloads that I got in relationship to the astrology. Definitely look at the eclipse reading for more. And I hope that this is an incredibly positive and abundant time for you, dear Pisces. Like this video and subscribe. Hello, dear Aquarius. So Aquarius, I would say definitely take a look at the Jupiter in Aries reading and the Saturn uh, in Pisces and the Pluto in Aquarius readings, right? Um, in general, the cards are absolutely picking up on, you know, you all moving forward after experiencing a lot of hardships and um, maybe some sort of legal and also career and professional and relationship kind of shakeups. And for those of you who may still be going through those things, those readings could also shed more light um, and give you additional wisdom for those particular situations and just additional wisdom related to those transits in general, which will absolutely be affecting you um, particularly, okay? And so with this Jupiter and Taurus transit in particular, Jupiter will be transiting your fourth house. For those of you with this transit going through your fourth, your fourth house, it's related to relocation to a new home, traveling long distance to visit homelands, ruins, or family or loved ones, or even them traveling to you, right? And if you look here, we have the death card and we have the happy family card here. And um, this door of destiny, um, it looks like, you know, closure to certain sort of official or even legal um, or sort of bureaucratic issues that affected some of your close relationships. But then when we turn this card over, it says freedom flows. So it also relating to some of what I just mentioned in terms of, you know, relationships with family and the home um, being the point of focus, right? So relocation to a new home, traveling long distance to visit homelands, ruins, family or loved ones or them traveling to you. Also expanding your family or expanding your ideas of what family means to you. This could absolutely be about long distance relationships. It's also about uh, core wounds and revisiting and rebuilding foundational habits um, or healing some of your close and core and even familial relationships. All right. So with this transit, it's absolutely just about more, more joy and pleasure being found with your family connections and your close relationships and your experiences and or your home life right during this cycle it's definitely just about an increased sense of security and safety right um, in your domestic and your uh, sort of private home life it's absolutely a great time to plan things like home renovation projects or if you've been wanting to buy or or sell property um, these things could go well right? We have the contracts card here in reverse, right? So these things could go well. Um, and it says, I release the need to know all the answers. There's something here about um, if there are any losses, right? Them being for your good in some way, or um, you needing to make peace with a sort of disappointing judgment or decision, um, and maybe even grieving old relationships or even old homes if you are relocating, right? Um, I'm definitely getting something here about, you know, if you've had any conflicts or rifts within your family in the past, in general, with this transit, um, you know, Jupiter is about long distance. So, it's like if you've had rifts or if, or if there is distance between you and someone, or even if it's someone who is a foreigner or someone at a distance from you or from a different culture, um, this is a great time to uh, repair or restore those relationships potentially, or you may be beginning new relationships, right, with these people, with people from different cultures, right? Um, definitely. I'm seeing something about um, 
meditation being something that's really important, right? And that being a part of your sort of daily and domestic home life and your daily routines, right? It says releasing the need to know all of the answers and maybe again, making peace with the disappointing judgment or decision and, and you, turning to your spirituality, um, focus on your mental health, right? To sort of heal the heart since we have the broken heart card here, right? And we have the worry and the trust and the change change cards here all in reverse as well, right? And it, this card uh, under the change card and with the broken heart card is this morning memory, Okay, so there's certainly something here about trying to heal the heart and make peace with something. Um, and maybe that being related to there being a rift and there being uh, no closure or uh, a broken relationship with someone, right? There's absolutely something here about a rude awakening, not being able to unsee something, right? Um and that just sort of like fundamentally transforming um, core relationships or creating rifts or, or distance in a relationship or it, having created some sort of core wound that you will be healing with this transit. And this transit is all about healing core wounds. Okay, it's absolutely about healing core wounds and a lot of that involving sacred knowledge. And you sort of making your sacred domestic domestic life and your home space a sacred space. Okay, so that is what I have for you, dear Aquarius. I hope that this is an incredibly healing transit for you. And uh, I wish you all the best. Definitely like this video and subscribe. And check out all of the other remaining videos on this channel for additional wisdom. Take good care. Hello there Capricorns. So Jupiter transiting Taurus is all about this being good news for you, right? Um, because Taurus is your sister earth sign. But additionally, this transit is going to be happening in your fifth house, right? Which is a really, really lucky house. It's about creativity. It's about art and entertainment, fame. It's about connection with your inner fire and confidence. Um, it's about your sexuality um, and also your dating and romantic life, but also your relationships with children and pets um, and bringing you a sort of more lighthearted era of being unapologetically committed to your fun and enjoying life, enjoying the fruits of your labor, right? This is absolutely a transit that could uh, indicate travel, launching new creative projects, right? Um, and it just being divine timing to do it under this transit. If it is things that you have been working on for a long time, contracts, right, related to certain projects, or even with legal issues, if you've been having any legal issues and you've been wondering about whether or not they will... Um, sort of go in your favor. I'm getting with the contract card here and with the palmistry card here that there is something about divine favor working things out for you, right? Um, and also about any sort of positive uh, contracts or opportunities you are considering being uh, really positive for you, right? Um, and being perhaps negotiated in your favor, right, with this transit and you just being more empowered to negotiate and advocate in your favor and, you know, things being really profitable and positive for you, right, in the sense of what it is that you will be promoting and releasing, all right? Um, this transit is definitely about you um, being confident and empowered to achieve any ambitious goals that you have, right? Especially as it relates to any sort of creative hobbies or talents, any creative talents, right? Um, it's absolutely also a good time for you to turn maybe some sort of passion project or hobby into a profitable business or hustle, right? If it's something that you have been considering for a very long time, I'm looking at this anxiety card here in reverse and this doorway and it being related to pride, right? It's about confidence, about showing or revealing something, making the most of something, right? Um, and not being afraid of the growth, right? 
and um, any growth that you will receive in terms of rewards from it, but also the growth in terms of what it will require of you, it requiring a confidence and a trust and belief in yourself and in the universe, okay? So because this transit is also related to children and pets, um, it could be uh, an indication that anything related to pets, um, any businesses related to pets, products related to pets, um, anything, if you are traveling with pets and worried about that, it um, being a good transit for it, right? Um, this is also a house for conception, right? Jupiter and Taurus, and then it transiting the fifth house of kids. It's like, if you've had any sort of fertility problems in the past, this is a transit where you never know a miracle could happen, right? You could get pregnant. Um, you could be able to conceive or you could have um, some luck with some sort of adoption process. Thinking about this contract card here, uh, uh, maybe even if it is like adoption of a child from a different culture um, or at a distance, right? Maybe some of those kinds of things um being successful for you, right? Um, and yeah, you being able to welcome a new addition to your home, right? Um, in terms of welcoming new additions to your home, if you've even be con been considering getting a pet, this could be a great a great transit for you. Finding your little, uh, you know, animal soulmate, you know. <laughs> but in general, you exploring your creativity could bring you a lot of opportunities. Um, and open up new avenues for you, right? You could even be exploring new ways of having fun, exploring new hobbies, right? And that leading you to meeting new people, right? Um, you could also be finding like a lot of inspiration or, or, um, sort of, I don't know, like optimism and transformation through you coming into contact with some sort of creative art, um, from someone else, right? I'm thinking about going to a concert, right? Or, or having some sort of like transformative, awe inspiring, um, experience from some art that you, um, come into contact with that you witness or something like that, right? Creative projects in general, this could be a time where you win some type of recognition or reward for something, right? Especially if, um, yeah, just in general. This could be a time too for a lot of travel related to creative projects, right? Touring, exhibitions, things like that. And in general too, love or romance could come into your life or any sort of existing romance could really grow, right? Bring you a lot of love and happiness um, and fulfillment, right? You could find that you have more options for love um, if you open yourself up to dating um, in some way, or maybe you finding love in a foreign place, right? But in general, um, in terms of the cards, I am picking up on a particular kind of message for you all, right? Related to your pride and your confidence, which is what the, what the fifth house is a lot, a lot of times. Okay. So there's something here about having pride in your confidence your accomplishments, but perhaps being on the receiving end of envy from others um, because they only have a bird's eye view of your life, right? And I'm getting that from uh, the envy card here, uh, from the acceptance. I'm, I'm just getting it from all of the cards in a particular way, right? Um, People may only see the achievements, right? But not all of the ch sort of challenges that you've overcome mentally, emotionally, et cetera, to really achieve the successes that you have, right? Um, so we have the healer of the ages card here, right? You could have absolutely, I mean, I find that to be the case with a lot of Capricorns because they, they don't really show their weaknesses. <laughs> a lot of people just see the achievements. Um, and so, you know, this could be something that you are battling with due to some new achievements and successes, or maybe some sort of transformations that people are just seeing externally, right? From the outside. And so it's like from the outside, you may, you know, you appear as a mirror to others, right? You may 
trigger people's envy because they just see your accomplishments and they only see how, you know, much they haven't accomplished through looking at you and sort of comparing themselves, right? Or seeing how much more perhaps they need to grow, right? Um, I'm also seeing that, you know, surprising opportunities could be coming your way that just fancy your heart's desires with this healer of the ages card and the heart chakra just being lit up like this <laughs> right um and just again like i said you being confident and empowered to take them up and advocate in your interests and contracts i'm also getting to that um this could also be a forewarning to you in the cards not to over identify with external validation money and success and to also interrogate if any envy and vengeful competition is a motivator for you to achieve certain things. All right, don't shoot the messenger. This is just a message that I am getting because we have the angel of strength card here. And because the fifth house, you know, it's the sign of Leo's, you know, generally the fifth house is ruled by the sign of Leo. A lot of the times that can just be about, you know, appearances and wanting to be adored and validated and even, you know, about competition, right? Just ego gratification kinds of things, right? So I'm definitely seeing that that may be something for you, right? To interrogate with the Jupiter and Taurus transit. Okay. Um, I'm also getting a message here with, uh, the pride and the, um, the growth and the acceptance cards and the ways that these doorways look that there could be something here about beauty in the eye of the beholder. That's the message that I got. Um, maybe you've had some changes to your body image and your diet, right? And maybe you are, um, finding a newfound confidence and a pride in your appearance, right? Or needing to be mindful with food indulgences and health with this transit, with this healer card here coming up, right? And given that you trine, your sign is the sister sign to Taurus and Virgo, right? Which a lot of time is about that balance with indulgence and mindfulness around health. Okay, so this could be a transit where maybe, um, uh, I, I, I have to say with this healer of the ages in the contracts card, there's something here about weight, weight loss, body image and diet. Um, I'm seeing a doctor with this white coat here. I'm seeing being weighed on a scale. I'm also seeing maybe you all exploring energy healing, um, that being something to add into your health and wellness plans. Um, and I'm also seeing too, just in general, this being a transit that is about you all making a plan to achieve your health goals. Okay. And, um, yeah, in general, this just being a great chance to really, uh, reinvent yourself, fall deeper in love with yourself, right? And not worry so much about trying to get anyone else to accept you for who you are. And, you know, you having pride in yourself and your sense of identity and um, you know, enjoying the fruits of your labor and uh, looking forward to all of the amazing and creative uh, projects and accomplishments that you will be revealing in the future and maybe throughout the time of this transit. All right, dear Capricorns, so take good care of yourselves. Like this video and subscribe to the channel. Check out the remaining videos here and best wishes. Hello, dear Sagittarius. So Jupiter and Taurus is transiting your sixth house. For those of you with this Jupiter and Taurus transit coming through the sixth house, it is all about balance. It's about balance with give and take. It's about balance with work and life responsibilities and personal health. And that struggle to perhaps maintain a balance of self-care when you are maybe caretakers um, of others or even work in helping in health professions. Or if in general, you are someone who tends to be a giver, someone who prioritizes others, right? The victory card here is indicating a time of celebrating a big milestone and achievement, right? For some of you, Jupiter may still be coming through the fifth house or it be the tail end or just in general, right? You um, celebrating a big milestone and achievement 
um, and maybe even a time of having any health scares or mental health issues resolved and improved, right? Since this uh, victory card also has a wreath, uh, an embellishment on the crown, right, under this health card. And so much about mental health has been coming through in the cards for you all, right? And um, so definitely take a look at the eclipse reading to get a bit more information about that. Your um, 2023 timeless uh, tarot reading for the year on this channel and also the other relevant readings here as well. But definitely getting that, right? That your sixth house of day-to-day -day work, routines, and health-related matters will be improving, right? Um, and it will be about balance, right? With this peace card here in the middle, right? And um, it's a great time for you to sort of overhaul and your daily routines, right? And make a plan on how to achieve any health goals that you have for yourself during this transit. It's absolutely ushering in a new powerful beginning for you when it comes to um, diet, exercise, health, wellness, and also um, this sort of like warning to watch your health and your diet because this transit can be one that causes emotional eating, overindulgence, and even emotional spending, right? So everything in the cosmos truly has been urging you to commit to a healthier lifestyle and build a sort of solid spiritual sense of self um, through your rituals, right? And you just really tapping into holistic health so that everything helps you sustain your workload and fun, right? And that will all continue to improve with this transit, right? Powerful breakthrough in your mental health and you understanding your trauma and um, any sort of supernatural experiences and phenomena um, from a higher and newer perspective, right? Um, because Jupiter and Aries and other transits have been um, activating your spiritual knowledge, right? Um, have been activating uh, psychic and crown chakra activations for you, right? We have the third eye card here in reverse. <laughs> and we also have this sort of... Um, this meditation card, the magician in reverse, right? There, there's just been so many things related to you all healing from trauma, grief, um, and just bringing everything into balance and all of these things happening, any hardships, um, about the universe kind of trying to get your attention for you to tap into your spirituality bring spiritual wellness into your wellness routines and daily daily routines, right? Jupiter and Aries was about gifting you spiritual knowledge around what it means to be an empath and a highly sensitive and also to force you to grow your connection to the divine, to connecting with your ancestors and to connecting with your intuitive gifts. And because that is connected to your creativity in a lot of ways, right? So I'm getting that you all should invest in some sort of wellness ret retreat experiences, some yoga, some energy healing, right? All of these things um, with the cards. And even with the, uh, the peace and the hummingbird card, I'm getting the message that a tropical place with clear blue water will do you good. A place with hummingbirds will be really special for you somehow um, in this during this transit, right, it could be some sort of synchronistic event where a hummingbird or a bird um, just really comes and that acts as some sort of synchronicity for you about um, healing something, about good news coming your way, um, just something, right, it being meaningful and symbolic for you. And with the patience and the healer card too, I'm getting that, you know, some blocks or even burnout um, could be affecting your health, right? Any health issues that you have ignored for a long time, it's just best not to wait to address them or they could worsen and even require serious medical attention or surgery if you do not be proactive because most likely um, any of your issues um, are most likely mental and emotional and maybe even gut health issues, right? And and things that are about these sort of psychic, psychic awakening uh, symptoms, right? So 
<clears throat> excuse me, realignment, connection, strengthening your chakra systems, healing the middle and upper chakras, right? All of these things to boost your confidence, heal your heart, and help with your third eye awakening, all right? With this transit of the sixth house, there could also be powerful positive changes in your workplace, right? Benefits could come through work um, or through your relationships with your coworkers or employees or even bosses during this time. It's definitely about rewards also related to your leadership and your collaborative working uh, skills, right? This could also be a transit where you experience some drastic surprises and changes, right? Um, that even relate to you changing your place of work, right? Um, but ultimately it being for your highest good. And this was a message that came through for you all. All right. So in general, pay attention to opportunities uh, coming your way. Pay attention to your health um, and take good care of yourselves, Sagittarius. Like this video and subscribe to this channel. Take care. Hello, dear Scorpios. So this Jupiter and Taurus transit is coming through your seventh house of partnerships. For those of you with Jupiter coming through the seventh house, this is about business and romantic partners, right? Clients and also legal cases, okay, and relationships and dealings that are based on the public, your public sort of appearance and even reputation, okay? So I'm getting, if you look at this first row of cards here, soul lessons related to success, guilt, fear, and happiness, and then uh, gratitude. And if you look at this middle row of cards where we have the fear card, if you look right below it, right, this um, sort of doorway and then the caring connections card, I'm getting the message that for you with this transit, it's about happiness being on the other side of your fears, right? And how things can really accept accelerate and come full circle in all areas of your life. Some long awaited um, success, uh, milestone or huge glow up could finally happen for you after much time and dedication. But part of that is based on you essentially retreating from a former job or lifestyle, cutting off ties that no longer serve you, right? Um, and enforcing boundaries, essentially. And this could be related to separations in terms of a divorce, separations from old colleagues, old friends, or even boundaries with family, right? And all of this sort of forcing you to really dig deep into your power, your self-belief, and your self-love, and belief in the universe as love, right? And you just really facing your fears. There's something here, right, about you being rerouted to your happiness, where you're able to essentially use certain skills that bring you into alignment and that gift you gratitude for the opportunities that have come your way and that have shaped you and given you practice for the new opportunities that are appearing in your life in terms of you having to walk away from certain certain um, sorts of uh, relationships and opportunities in your past, right? Opportunities and love and life at large just really abound. And there's something here about things perhaps not having worked out as planned, but that being because your view was limited in terms of um, the connections that uh, needed to enter your life, new connections, new changes of scenery, um, and a new sort of idea of your potential, right? You need to change and to grow. And this transit is really all about bringing you new opportunities and relationships, contracts, etc., that will help you to change and to grow and really be rerouted to your most sort of, I think, soul satisfying success in some way. Um, if you are unhappy in your current relationship, I think you're going to be asked to think about why this is the case, right? And, and what practical steps you can take to sort of rectify that if something can be healed, right? Um, and also if you've been single and looking for a partner, this is a transit that could absolutely bring you uh, the love of your life, truly, um, as long as you essentially open your heart, put yourself 
out there, right? And if you look at the cards here, um, happiness, the happiness card here is related to 1111. So really, truly open your heart, open your mind um, to what you really, really want your life to look and feel like, what truly animates your utmost ideal of happiness, because it could absolutely um, come true for you, right? With this transit, you could, like I said, meet the love of your life. Um, you could enjoy um, an increase in your finances and your senses of stability, um, in some way through marriage or through serious business partnerships, um, and, uh, success in negotiations and contractual agreements. That is often what the seventh house is about, right? And in general, it is a time where you could enhance an existing relationship, right? And in general, with this transit, in terms of fear and success and guilt here, um, and, and the strategy card being in reverse, this is absolutely about you needing to not be afraid in negotiations and in advocating for what you desire and deserve in any way and in any type of relationship, especially related to financial benefits, right? Um, so you could, if you are already partnered, right, you could find more joy in your relationships and they could just become more easygoing. People could resolve issues um, related to beliefs and just the aspects of partnering, right? Legal matters or any challenging relationship problems could be resolved now, um, or even in general, any sorts of disputes with clients or customers. Um, all of these things could truly uh, improve for you, right? And um, this could be a time though, given that there's Uranus in the midst here where um, you could experience some surprises, right? Someone could uh, propose to you, right? And that be some sort of um, dream of yours, um, some sort of dream come true, but also some sort of surprise. Sorry if I'm ruining it. But <laughs> um, again, these are the kinds of things that could happen, right? And maybe it lead to you having to negotiate mutual assets, right? Um, if you are conjoining your lives in some way, right? This could absolutely be a transit where you um, do conjoin your life in some way through owning partners, through uh, sorry, owning a joint assets, joining your assets and your, your finances in some way. Um, and in general, right, I see this as a time where you could be taking on the role of a consultant or advisor, or you could benefit from helpful consultants or advisors, faded helpers showing up in your life to give you some advice, given that we have the strategy card here um, in reverse and the transformations card, right, or gratitude, right? These could be people that come to help you resolve issues, right? Financial advisors, uh, relationship therapists. Um, or in general, you finding success in these sorts of roles, right? And yeah, that is really the sort of main message here for you all with this transit. I wish you so much luck, love, and happiness, Scorpios. Definitely take a look at the eclipse season uh, video here on the channel, given that these major eclipses are coming through uh, in the sign of Taurus, but also your sign and continuing to shake up your life, right? And if things have already been uh, sort of unstable, um, a lot of surprises, a lot of uncertainty in your life, these particular readings and understandings of these transits could just provide you with more peace of mind, right? And um, yeah, understanding, higher understanding so that you go forward with gratitude, right? And with a sort of fearlessness and opening yourself up to all of the amazing opportunities that are just waiting for you, okay? So take a care, like this video, and subscribe.
Hello, dear Libras. So, Libras, Jupiter in Taurus is going to be transiting your eighth house. For those of you with this transit coming through the eighth house, it is all about marriage. It's about divorce. It's about childbirth. It's about relationships with shared assets and, in general, negotiating how much you own and share of yourself physically, emotionally, and financially. It's also about psychological transformation related to taboo ideas or, or spiritual knowledge, right? Um, in your relationship to the medical industry, maybe even having medical operations and being in the helping professions, okay? And these things have been coming up in all of your readings, dear Libra. There is a reading here on the channel about you making executive decisions and like informed cosmetic surgic or surgical decisions. Decisions, right? So um, definitely check out all of the other readings here on this channel and especially the recent eclipse season readings given that uh, the eclipses are activating Taurus and Scorpio houses related to closely related to Jupiter and Taurus themes. Uh, and where those readings offer additional sort of wisdom and insight. And also because the eclipses are going to be coming, happening through your sign, right? And your sister sign Aries. Okay. So definitely take a look at those. Um, but Jupiter is activating your eighth house of deep intimacy, past traumas and shared resources, debts and taxes. So you may feel drawn to sort of reevaluate and heal your intimate relationships. Um, and uh, you can experience a sort of breakthrough when it comes to healing from trauma and any emotional wounds, okay? And um, it's also a good time to kind of discuss and face any matters related to your shared resources with any romantic or business partners, all right? And Jupiter being there to kind of help support, um, you know, things reaching some sort of a uh, positive resolve, most hopefully in the in the highest good of all involved, right? Um, and definitely with the cards, that seems to be a particular sort of worry here that is kind of like a sort of looming dark cloud for some of you, right? Where um, many of you are pondering uh, making a clear cut decision, maybe making a clean break to end the constant rumination and anxiety and this sort of dark cloud over you in terms of having hard discussions, ending certain relationships, uh, and maybe trying to reconcile with someone from your past, right? Um, maybe reevaluating some and experiencing some regret in terms of some relationships and um, wanting forgiveness, right? If you look at the cards here, right? This looks like um, a situation, a scenario where someone was um, taken for granted. The grass wasn't greener on the, on, the, on the other side, right? Of some sort of decision that was made in a relationship where perhaps um, someone, uh, where perhaps you are longing for someone from your past or where you are looking to end a particular relationship where that is the cure of your longing, wanting to get out of certain contracts and relationships, you know, um, and resolve something, right? Um, so that you can, you looking forward to the grass being greener on the other side of this situation, right? Being resolved and ended, right? Um, but there may be being some worry about um, being taken for granted or someone else feeling taken for granted, someone else feeling deceived or you feeling deceived or a situation where you're currently <laughs> in a relationship and and secretly trying to plot of how to get out of that relationship and rekindle another relationship from your past, hoping that someone forgives you or in general with some 
with with however this plays out for you it definitely looks like a third party situation here right um there haven't been some interference and um there's the three of cups card here so if you look at this middle row of cards it's a cure for longing change beckons three of cups the sacred lotus and then freedom flows right so there's definitely a sort of third party situation here where um there is a longing for someone from your past and hoping to exit out of a current relationship or um and hoping to be forgiven for uh taking that person for granted or vice versa right where maybe this is something that will um happen for you or maybe you are in a relationship and someone comes back and wants your forgiveness because they feel like they took you for granted and you being in a situation where you have to decide to cut ties with someone that you're currently in a relationship with to to um you know seek the grass green grass on the other side of this doorway right opening yourself up to new relationship possibilities but it definitely looks like um someone from the past um they're just not being a clean break clear cut ties um closure emotionally right in terms of some sort of old romantic relationship and um either you or them still secretly looking for you looking at you on social media to get an idea of how uh, the other person is doing if the grass has been greener in their life since the separation um someone hoping the door is still open to be forgiven right um just all these kinds of things and maybe some of this being about divorce and there needing to be a legal situation right to separate assets um these things affecting taxes uh working relationships who knows or just in general separating your lives you know in general if you have conjoined lives since we have the contracts card here and the forgiveness and freedom flows okay that is really the sort of main message here and maybe some of you are dealing with an aries in your life there's some overlap here um and uh maybe just in general because these things are being activated related to the aries and libra sort of um eclipses right and you both being sister signs and you all may be experiencing some mirroring situations in your life right um or even being involved <laughs> with people of each of your signs right so <laughs> there's definitely something there but in general this transit is about finding healing being brave you know trying to find some closure and it's about you know an ability to understand and accept anything right find deeper meaning and significance and experiences and um yeah with with the deceit card to with the eighth house this can also be about in-depth study or research right and how that can be something that goes really well for you um if you study if you're in education and you're doing research for something or if you are just seeking higher knowledge and higher understanding doing your own personal research um any type of in-depth study or research is likely to go well and just in general this is about making a decision finding some closure with the world card being here um yeah so that you can experience freedom okay so that is what i have for you dear libras like this video and subscribe and most definitely take take a look at all of the other readings here on the channel because they got some more tea and also some wisdom for you all right take good care hello dear virgos so this jupiter and taurus transit is coming through your ninth house for those of you with jupiter and taurus traveling through the ninth house this is all about expanding your knowledge and even your transnational reach okay so for the virgos jupiter and your sister earth sign is really going to be about um you know raising your 
your awareness, knowledge, transnational connection, any rewards through higher education, international travel, and spirituality, okay? It will absolutely be about you receiving gains and rewards related to these areas and also any sort of um, promotions, publishing, and launches of your work and your ideas and your products into the world through media and sales channels, right? And this is even if you have already been receiving rewards in these areas, this transit is about taking things up a notch, right? And expanding your market, your market uh, demand, your market reach, your monetary gain, exposure, your knowledge, and your spiritual awakening even more, okay? This is a serious enterprising transit, okay? And also a serious spiritual transit. And it's all about growth and connection, but also reflection, which is what I am getting from the cards. And, you know, while it will catalyze more travel and expansion of your awareness, opening of your mind, you know, through engagement with other cultures and diverse knowledges, it can even be about, uh, you know, your mind being blown, your, your, you know, uh, <laughs> your, your awareness being heightened through, um, herbs and uh, psychedelic drugs even if I'm, I'm thinking about this cornucopia card here okay and um yeah uh, I'm definitely seeing though that you know this transit will be about continuing to spark a sort of journey of spiritual awakening for you about orchestrating these sort of divine connections, but also even crises and sort of mystical and psychic experiences, right? That force you to expand and dive deeper into what structures your belief systems. Okay. That is really what I am getting from this because, um, this transit will be um, about you sort of spiritually examining how your life has come full circle for you to experience success or love beyond what you imagined and even beyond what anyone in your family has achieved, right? And that is what I'm getting from the cards. And it's about you perhaps re-examining your relationship to the religions and cultural traditions of your family of origin and the ones you were raised up in, right? That That is what I was getting from the cards, okay? Definitely re-examining early childhood and even parental familial influence on your health and lifestyle practices, you know, um, spiritual beliefs love relationships, right? And how these early models were perhaps imperfect, right? And and perhaps left you spiritually and emotionally bankrupt in a sense, heartbroken or disconnected you from religion and even um, your family members, right? But how life has sort of brought you or is bringing you back around to deep wisdoms and inherited spiritual gifts from your childhood, from your culture and your bloodline, and how it has still led you to finding, you know, kinship, community, and love, right, in these really powerful ways, right, that have healed your heart. And, um, and that has led to you can tapping into a particular kind of abundance and success that people in your family couldn't, right? And this isn't for all of you. For some of you, you were raised in a way that sort of secured your relationship to cultural wisdoms and spiritual gifts, while for others, it was imperfect and it created a sort of divine detour, right? Away from participating in religion and some spiritual aspects of your culture where you are seeing how it's still shaped you and led you to nuggets of wisdom and uh, wisdom that you monetize, right? It has led you to a pot of gold and your purpose, right? It just wasn't in a neat way that you expected or on your idea of the perfect timeline. And that's what I'm getting with the the purpose card here um, in reverse. And uh, yeah. And the patience card I'm getting, you know, as this message about, you know, this transit encouraging you to accept, you know, just really accept how everything 
happens in divine order. Okay, how everything happens in divine order. And you, with this transit too, it's like you could absolutely feel an urge to um, deepen your your spirituality, um, join, you know, spiritual communities, and uh, even, you know, just kind of fix this sort of crisis and belief in spirituality or fear of opening up to certain intuitive gifts, maybe healing relationships with the family, right? Rift and distance um, in terms of Jupiter, in Taurus, and then looking at this cornucopia card, I'm thinking about the holidays, right? Holiday travel even being something significant for you with this transit, um, where perhaps this holiday season is one where you do sort of heal some sort of broken relationship. Or um, in general, I'm also getting that Um, for any of you who are single, you could be meeting the love of your life while traveling, right? Or in a library, um, I'm getting at just something about outside unusual spaces, right? Or, um, or even meeting someone outside of your usual preferences with this transit, right? That is significant. And um, in general, right, this is absolutely about a lot of uh, big international travel for you and travel planning. Um, This being a transit that could bode well for relocating uh, out of state or uh, to a different country, um, experiencing another culture. If you've been thinking about it for a while, um, it just really bodes well for that. I definitely got uh, (laughs) the... The phrase, uh, psychically life laughs and flowers, um, and that being related to just the ways that life comes full circle for you, but also, um, your relationship to naturopathy, um, and natural healing remedies, herbal healing, um, reconnecting to cultural wisdoms in a way, um, psychedelic experiences, um, but also this even being a great transit to launch or relaunch some sort of business in these industries related to health, wellness, herbs, naturopathy, healing, um, any of these kinds of products at the intersection of like wellness, um, apothecary products, beauty, right? Um, but also you even taking part in like cultural or healing experiences uh, wherever you are locally or even as you travel, right? Or even t- starting an educational program to learn more about these kinds of healing practices or something, right? That being uh, something that you are achieving, reaching a milestone with or newly beginning with this transit, right? These are all of the sort of like downloads that I got um, and that uh, I see represented here in the cards for you all. Definitely leave this video a like, subscribe to the channel, comment below how it transpires for you, what comes to pass for you or resonates, okay? Over time, coming back to this video, all right? And definitely uh, take good care of yourselves. Um, with this transit, it can absolutely be about taking advantage of all of the amazing opportunities, but still being mindful of how a lot of travel um, and even a lot of work can um, influence your diet. Um, take you know, uh, influence your health, maybe even influence burnout, all of these kinds of things. So everything in balance. Um, and uh, I wish you so much abundance, healing, love, and blessings, dear Virgos. Take good care. Hello, dear Leos. So Jupiter and Taurus is transiting your 10th house for those of you who are Leo rising. And for those of you with Jupiter transiting the 10th house um, of Taurus, this is all about a major level up in career, right? Jupiter is activating and is blessing your 10th house of social status, public image, and achievements and accolades, okay? 
today. Jupiter will be connecting with the North Node of Destiny and Uranus in this house, which is a sort of once in a lifetime sort of energy, uh, an opportunity, right? To really sort of, um, have these major new beginnings and achieve some of the biggest accolades in your career. Okay. And because Jupiter rules your uh, creative fifth house, naturally, um, a lot of this will be related to um, your creative work, your opportunities to bring your creative work to the public eye, and those things being really successful, you having more opportunities to perform or to exhibit or to um, grow your creative entrepreneurial career and maybe some of that also being related to travel being related to more exposure through um social media and sales and even news channels right and um in general also you sort of being seen favorably by uh these sort of authority figures or the most sort of influential people um within your particular kind of industry right um people seeing more potential in you people um being more open to help you along people who have authority and influence in your career industry right and in general you also but you, you becoming one of those people as well for some of you, right? And you rubbing shoulders more with some of the sort of titans in whatever career industry you're in, right? And you just growing, elevating your social status. Okay. And with this though, is, is a message to just not overwork yourself, um, avoid any possible burnouts and just be mindful of how the increased demands, right? For you and all of the increase in opportunities for you, be mindful of how that affects your diet, right? Um, how that affects your spending if you are celebrating a lot and, um, uh, yeah, just balance so that you don't avoid, so that you can avoid burnout, okay? Now, I have to tell you, in terms of the cards, I was getting of a different aspect of how this transit could play out, okay, related to the 10th house, all right? So the 10th house is also about the court of public opinion, right? It's about your public reputation, and it's also about speculation and gossip okay and one of the things that i um got very clearly with your reading like when i pulled the cards all of a sudden it was just like uh birds just birds were just swarming past my past my window right just swarming past my window and um part of this is absolutely related to like just the increased attention that you're going to be getting right um Maybe people swarming you, maybe you experiencing some fame through your increased attention and success, right? People, paparazzi, who knows, things like that. But I'm also getting that this is just strongly about gossip and people being particularly sort of pressed because you're so blessed, right? And then wanting to attribute your success to other things. And I have to say that one of the things that I got related to that is, you know, people wanting to attribute your success to witchcraft, right? I know. Um, people also wanting to attribute your success to you having, um, favor from like your parents or some sort of authority figure or wise male in your life or in your, in your industry or in your network, right? In general, people just wanting a reason to hate on you, right? Um, and yeah, just wanting to like not give you your proper credit, right? Even though that they can't deny that you work, you worked to earn you know, the particular success that you have, right? Um, and the advice, you know, is to just take the high road in anything that you do and, uh, and how you present yourself publicly and just really accept your limited ability to change people's, um, fixed ideas about you. You know, um, the surrender card here says I can release my need to control. And it says that I cannot change the past. And it says I accept responsibility for my well-being 
And the pride card here says, I love myself and I see myself in everyone. All right. So that is definitely what I am getting here. Um, but definitely you all getting love and appreciation, right? We have the angel of love and the appreciation card here. All right. And um, so one of the other messages that I got from these cards is that uh, related to the guilt, pride, blame, regret, surrender, soul lesson cards, for some of you, this is about you coming to a sort of deeper appreciation for the wisdom of your upbringing um, and your hardships and uh, maybe releasing resentment and blame that you had towards others for not protecting you in some way from something, protecting you from sharks. Um, if you look under the surrender card, this doorway card here, that to me is like a shark's mouth. Um, yeah. For others of you, um, yeah, that's definitely one of the things that I'm getting. So because, you know, Jupiter rules your fifth house naturally, this house is also about mothers. And um, I'm getting that for some of you, this is also about healing your relationship with your mother or with motherhood or with a mentor, right? Releasing blame and resentment, maybe even receiving a long overdue apology, Um or for some of you, this is about um, goodness. This is about how your increased sort of career opportunities and all of these things uh, affect motherhood. You being a mother or being a mentor in some way, right? Um, yeah, and for others of you, I'm definitely getting that your role as a mentor or your relationship with your child has affected your reputation in some way. If there is a bad blood or if there is just an industry where there is just so much gossip and speculation, right? And um, yeah, with this uh, appreciation card and with the door to spirit card, um, and with the pride card, cause with the pride card, I often, I get, I get, uh, I get like native American and herbal remedies with that, with that card. Uh, that's just what that card means for me. Um, with this, I'm also getting that your relationship to mental health, to marijuana and other healing drugs or herbs, um, could be something that is really, uh, it's a big thing for you with this transit, right? Not having shame about using these things or experimenting with these and finding that they are gateways to higher knowledge and even psychic communication and creativity for you, right? And even um, improving your mental health, relieving anxiety. Um, you may be having some transcendent experiences, they feeling like a miracle drug, or maybe you even experimenting with some sort of new drug on the market, something like that uh, could be in store for you. This could even be about you maybe starting a business or an enterprise related to these kinds of products, right? And you sharing them with others, you teaching others about their effects and even their benefits. Okay. And for some of you, because um, this transit Jupiter through Taurus, like I mentioned in the collective reading, a lot of time can be about how we experiment, how we engage and interact with different cultures um, and the tensions of cultural appreciation versus appropriation. I'm getting it for some of you, that could be something that comes up for you too in your career, maybe related to gossip, maybe related to the things that people say about you, right? The court of public opinion. Um, so yeah, those are the things that I have for you overall, um, dear Leos, um, you know, trust your inner power. Don't feel any guilt about your success, own your success, own your power, own your creative power, take advantage of the opportunities and the blessings that are being bestowed upon you. Use your power wisely, right? And, uh, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. And that is also one of the things that I am getting as uh, just a, a overall sort of takeaway for you with this transit. I wish you all so much love, luck, 
abundance and success. Take a minute to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Check out the remaining videos on the channel. If you want to laugh with me about the messages that have been coming through about witchcraft and y'all being some witches, okay, um, <laughs> that, that's been coming through. All right. Um, but that is absolutely all in love and no judgment here on this channel. Okay. So take good care of yourselves, Leos. Hello, dear Cancers. So, Cancers, Jupiter and Taurus will be transiting your 11th house. For those of you with this transit coming through the 11th house, it is all about expanding your networks and connecting with your soul tribe, all right? And you taking a chance on yourself related to visionary ideas and um, new experiences, things that you want to um, explore, right? And do. And this placement is moving from your 10th into your 11th house. And it's really signaling a time when your ventures, any ventures related to e-commerce, um, YouTube, tech and media, um, or anything related to um, entertainment will be launching and expanding um, or even restocking, relaunching, right? And um, achieving like incredibly increased success. And when, when you'll also be expanding your social networks, your clientele and just your fan bases, right? You almost like to be coming into contact with and seeking out more like-minded people or beneficial contacts, you know, related to your business ventures, um, related to uh, your shared hobbies and values, or, you know, people within your shared professions and industries, anybody that could be helping you with product development, exporting, um, and importing. While in general, you'll also be shaping your ventures more explicitly around your independence, right? Your personal benefit, your personal satisfaction, and fresh visionary ideas, right? There is just a great chance that you connect with your soul tribe during this transit, right? And it just brings fresh benefits and energy to networking activities that contribute to your long-term goals, right? And your long-term goals and wishes might be broad and perhaps unusual or even ahead of their time and just even visionary, right? Um, or ambitious, right? And you may enjoy, you know, dreaming up ideas for the future, right? And, um, you know, achieving your goals can come more easily and you are essentially, um, encouraged to just really not think that the sky is the limit, right? Um, it, some things may just require careful planning and networking, right? And, um, you know, wish it and it can, it can come true. Um, but in general, income from your business or career is just likely to increase and you are likely to be filled with new ideas and, um, reaching out to people beyond your usual circle may open doors for you and bring joy into your life. Um, in a, in a new way, right? You might find that, um, you have taken on more responsibilities, said yes to too many events, um, over scheduled, over promised, right? In a way that is just unrealistic. And so that is something to, uh, sort of watch out for with this transit. Um, a Taurus is a sign that is absolutely associated with, you know, the body. Um, it naturally rules your sixth house of health and work-life balance. And so the cards suggest that this transit may bring challenges, surprises, and even breakthroughs for many of you related to these themes, right? And I'm picking up on a few different scenarios um, in the cards, right? Where um, for some of you, there could be... Um, there could be a pregnancy reveal um, or you having to make health, diet, and lifestyle changes to accommodate pregnancy. Um, or, you know, you could have any, you could have health issues affecting your energy and maybe your self belief and your ability to complete certain goals. And these are things that you may be keeping a secret, right? Um, 
but that you may have to reveal. Um, but definitely this is about work-life balance and delegating tasks. And for some of you, I'm also getting the message that, um, you know, with this transit, you know, some of you are experiencing a fear of like living in your truth in some way, right? Accepting something about yourself, accepting your duality, maybe living a lie in some way, worried about judgment from others. Um, if you were to reveal certain truths, right? Or, or just in general, right? Um, worried about how these things could affect your goals or even your public reputation. Um, or long-standing relationships when I'm getting the overall message for you all with this transit is that when you reveal your truth, you will find your tribe, right? And um, yeah, that that's really, it's really the main thing. Um, absolutely the main thing. And so you could absolutely find some answers and remedies and just healing with this transit if you do have any health issues. Um, and maybe um, you know, the, this could come from you seeking out, you know, the expertise of someone or getting a recommendation, um, from someone in your network or in a new network, right. Or something like that. Right. But that is definitely what I have for you all. The overall message here is to definitely have courage, find the inner strength to face fear with confidence. Okay. And it says a the offerings card says, um, abundance lies in the heart that allows share more than expected and see love come around. Okay. So definitely take advantage of, uh, Jupiter in, uh, Taurus traveling through the 11th house and connecting with the North node and Uranus, like, uh, the eleventh house is also already the house of blessings, miracles, rewards. You know, from work well done in your career, and with Jupiter also coming through, right, and traveling and connecting with the North Node of Destiny, it is just absolutely about visionary ideas and being able to achieve success beyond your wildest dreams. All right, so take good care, uh, Cancers. Definitely like this video and subscribe, and check out the remaining videos on the channel. Take good care. Hello, dear Gemini's. So. Jupiter in Taurus is traveling through your 12th house. For those of you with this transit coming through the 12th house, this is about the house of the unconscious, the subconscious, right? Your emotional and psychological inner landscape. This is also the house of mystical and spiritual beliefs and healing arts. It is the house related to intuition and, you know, uh, psychic gifts and emotions and creative expression also psychological and emotional health and um even related things like psychoactive drugs and healthcare you know it's the house of intuitive discernment right in opposition to the house of secret enemies so when it is activated there are often tests of your discernment in relationships right of all kind but particularly with colleagues right and people within your professional industry and um so with this transit in general, it's like you may need to retreat and go inward after a time of a whole lot of networking and um, sort of external um, engagement, engagement with the public in some way um, and rest, right? Retreat and go inward, rest, take care of your mental health, um, decompress. This is a transit because this transit will also be um, coming through the 12th house and connecting with the North Node of Destiny and Uranus. This could absolutely be about crown chakra activations, right? Increase and in heightened intuition and psychic gifts um, and visionary ideas like downloads and um, uh, yeah, psychic communications, connection to the etheric realm. You are dreaming worlds being very rich, right? Um, and you even receiving a lot of insight through your dreams, right? And also your um, sleep just being more restful, more um, you feeling more uh, regenerated, 
Um, and this is also a time where meditation and all of these kinds of things, healing uh, arts, getting these kinds of treatments um, could be super helpful to for you and help with your regeneration and you know renewal in some way. And there's also um, just something with the 12th house about like solitude, contemplation, but also, you know, beginning a journey of study, studying uh, new age spirituality, studying ancient wisdom and spirituality, dream interpretation, or doing research, you know, during this time, right? Maybe even secretly going back to school um, and getting a certification in a trade or a degree or, or something like that. This could be a time where you are growing a skill or something behind the scenes, right? Um, and with where you may be doing something with people who don't know you uh, privately or, or who don't know your true identity, right? It's absolutely all about new beginnings when it comes to your spiritual development. It is a transit that can help you like heal emotional wounds truly um, and uh, any addictions and even self-destructive behaviors. Uh, it's also a transit that can also grow your business if your business is in the helping or healing professions in some way, some work that involves compassion, healing arts, or serving others, right? Um, these things being more lucrative. Um, and uh, yeah, you just in general experiencing a lot of personal growth, right? And with the cards and also with your recent uh, eclipse season reading, which I highly, highly, highly advise you to watch. There is also this uh, sort of message here about um, learning from mistakes, right? Um, and healing any aspect of victimhood mentality um, and healing wounds with it related to self-confidence um, and learning from mistakes, right? Not internalizing failure, right? transforming your mindset, right? And taking on a sort of growth mindset and um, growing your discernment and your sort of emotional and psychological capacity to evaluate and learn from critiques, um, heal any wounds and self-confidence from critiques and any unsuccessful creative projects, um, just rebuilding your self-confidence, integrating wisdom and, um, yeah, looking critically at anything that could be holding you back from from success, right? So that you go forward. We have the perseverance card here. And I think that this is also about not letting your money or any sort of external things define you um, and make you question your self-worth, right? In certain ways, right? And again, this being a transit where it's like, you know, rest up, tie up any loose ends, learn and integrate everything and get ready for when this transit comes through your first house, because it is about opening up a new door for you, right? In terms of your entire self-concept and your sort of, um, potential right in the world in every way the world being your oyster okay so that is what i have for you jim and i definitely definitely look at those other readings i beg you <laughs> because the insight was just so like the, the the stuff that came through in that reading like even i listened back to it and i was like oh wow like the wisdom you know so uh, Jupiter through the 12th house is all about wisdom and spirit was just bringing it through with that reading. All right. So take good care of yourselves. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure that you check out all of the other videos related to your moon and your sun sign and um, like and subscribe to the channel. Take good care of yourselves.